a fine bright day in the sun city of Egypt, Aswan. We are on our way to the ancient granite stone quarry from where the ancient Egyptians procured the hard granite needed for the grand monuments they built. An unfinished 137 foot obelisk still lies at this granite quarry. The obelisk was ordered by the famous female pharaoh Hatshepsut 3300 years ago, whose sphinx statue made of Aswan granite we saw in vlog 14 and whose mummy we have seen in vlog 15. Ancient Egyptians made tall pointed four-sided pillars carved out of a single stone. These monolithic pillars are called obelisks. The obelisks were usually placed as a pair at the entrance of the ancient temples, that is, in front of the pylons of the temple. The obelisk represented the sun god Ra, and many ancient obelisks still stand outside many temples in Egypt. The obelisks were admired by foreigners from ancient times for their beauty, and many obelisks were carried off to foreign lands. When Egypt became a Roman province around 2000 years ago, the Romans shipped around 50 obelisks to their native land in today's Italy. Rome herself boasts of around 13 ancient obelisks currently in place. Two more obelisks called Cleopatra's Needles were shipped in 1877 to London and New York where they still stand. This is a very creative banner for promoting cleanliness, showing an Egyptian pharaoh sweeping the streets. This is the ancient granite stone quarry we have come to see. The Egyptian government now conserves this site and promotes this as an open air museum. This is the pink spotted granite from which many statues and monuments of ancient Egypt were made. I shall take this piece of granite with me as a souvenir from this place. The sun is blazing at 42 degrees Celsius. The ground is burning. If I need to see the unfinished obelisk, I will have to make haste. I am standing on the natural bedrock, the hard pink spotted Aswan granite. There it is, I can see the obelisk lying horizontally.
We can still see the stonemason's marks on the rocks. These were made at least 3000 years ago. This block of stone must have been quarried in ancient times but was not carried away. There are many such blocks of stone lying everywhere in this quarry. The authorities have erected wooden ladders for the tourists to access the unfinished obelisk. This is no less than a small hike and I have started perspiring because of the heat.
I'm here to see the unfinished obelisk. It was for the Queen Hardship suit. Wow! This is what we have come to see. Hiking all this way into an ancient stone quarry. This is the obelisk that was ordered by Queen Hatshepsut but was abandoned, left unfinished because it developed a crack. The obelisk is free from three sides but is attached to the bedrock at the bottom. You can see the stonemason's marks all over this place, even on the obelisk. Can you see the longitudinal crack on the obelisk? It was this crack that squandered thousands of hours of hard work of the stone masons that were spent carving this huge rock. If this obelisk was completed, it would have been the largest standing obelisk in ancient Egypt. We know that Queen Hatshepsut was an ambitious woman and this was one of her mega projects. But the project engineer was biting off more than he could chew and this project had to be abandoned. To release a block of stone from the bedrock, the Egyptians drilled a series of small holes in the granite and inserted wooden wedges in it. These wooden wedges were then soaked with water which expanded in size and split the rock along the series of holes. An ingenious method in those times. The more I see, the more I am fascinated by the ingenuity of the ancient Egyptians. These are ancient stonemasons works still visible on the rocks. This pink granite was valued by the Egyptians for its durability and rightly so as most statues and monuments that were made using this stone have survived for millennia. These are marks left by the use of dolerite stone. Dolorite is harder than granite and if rubbed over it makes the granite slowly degenerate. You will be surprised to know that the ancient Egyptians used no chisels and hammers to carve this obelisk. Instead they used spherical dolorite stones. Hundreds of such dolorite spheres are found all over this quarry. It amazes me as to how much manpower the Egyptians possessed to accomplish such monumental feats of engineering. Be it building of the pyramids or the huge temple complexes, 
और सच ओवलिस्क I feel as if I have entered an ancient workshop. This place is a window to the civilization that astonishes us with its achievements. This was a mega project. Like I said, if completed, this would have been the largest obelisk in ancient Egypt. It would have measured 137 feet tall and more than 1000 tons in weight. We do not exactly know how these giants were carried off to the temple site from this quarry, how exactly the ancient Egyptian moved this obelisk and how they made it stand on the small base when it was finally erected. It is theorized that the Egyptians built a ramp and slowly slid the obelisk onto it using ropes. The other side of the ramp was steep and men pulling the obelisk from the other side slowly erected it in place. These are the impressions of the holes that were drilled to fit the wooden wedges. The wood would expand after being watered and the expansion was powerful enough to crack the granite.
एग्जिट नहीं लगे एग्जिट This is among the very unusual places I have visited in all my life. An actual stone quarry that was in use thousands of years ago. This place is very unassuming, but its significance cannot be underestimated. It is a true historic site, a window to the times of the golden period in Egyptian civilization, and a marvel of human accomplishments. I will see you in the next vlog.